Today is day 217 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on here at Code Wars. Thank you, tiny cat. Just try not to destroy anything, little kitty. That would be, as always, super awesome. Uh, what are we doing? So we are continuing on here at Code Wars. We're looking for a new Kata for us to tackle. Hopefully they had their server issues sorted out that we experienced a couple days ago. Still convinced that all of that was my fault, somehow. Most completed. I can't see over your back. Please move. Furry can't. No, no, no. I didn't say tight. Oh my god. Oh my god. You're on the space bar. And the arrow keys. We're just going to wait for you to move because you're terrible. Thank you. Um, Something on dubstep. No, no, no. Let's just go to home. Pretend nothing happened. Once more. Kata. Most complete. No, 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 no. We're not walking on the keyboard for a sixth time in the first two minutes. Bad whiskers. Hey, hey, I love you. Go play over here. What's that? Wiggling fingers. Oh my god. Someone might scratch you. Yeah, good. Go play. Seven. Seven. Hey, hey, no, no, no. Everyone can see you. No, oh my, stop following my fingertips. You furry abomination. Uh, fundamentals. 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 D D D D D D D. Are we are we set? We're good. Fun fundamentaled. Yeah. Door stepped. That's the old reference. D D D D D D D. Binary edition. Oh, fuck. Of course it is. Damn. Okay, you know what? Hold on. I do, I'm, I'm considering doing binary edition. However, I did just notice, find the smallest integer in the array. I would like to note that we just did something freakishly similar yesterday. Similar to our Code Wars free code camp fiasco, like, three to four days ago now, where one was find the smallest word in a string and the other was find the largest. So yesterday was, I believe, find the maximum value in a string. No, find the maximum value in subarrays. So in the interest of keeping on, we'll call it the same subject, same point, same issue, I think we could definitely do find the smallest integer in the array. I'd be down for that. I could be that guy. And then we could always come back to binary addition. Little kitty, what do you think of that? Good plan? No, you're on the other side of the bed for once? Cool, cool. Let's look at binary addition. I'm pretty sure we're gonna, we try not to skip, but in the interest of staying on topic, I, I would be willing to make that exception. Binary addition. Implement a function that adds two numbers together and returns their sum in binary. The conversion can be done before or after the addition. The binary number should be a string. <sighs> binary, binary, binary. We can do a little bit of binary research as a refresher binary damn 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 no isn't there a thing binary translator d d d d d d d, -d. text to binary let's do 12 oh god uh what's so zero that's not cool. What about one? Of course it is. Seven. 
I'm totally drawing a blank on what the hell binary is, how it works. Binary. Uh, okay, binary describes a numbering scheme you are totally trying to lay down on the keyboard, little cat, and it's not going to happen. Not today. Don't knock those over. Oh my god, you're gonna knock all of <coughs> you're gonna knock all of that over. So I'm just gonna move it for you in the meantime. In turn, you are the worst. Now we're gonna have to fetch those out of there. Uh uh, happy thoughts. So, binary describes a numbering scheme in which there are only two possible values for each digit. Zero and one, the term also references. Uh, refers to any digital code encoding decoding system in which there are exactly two possible states digital memory blah 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 so binary numbers look strange when they are digits weight increases by the power of two rather by the power of ten digital number digit furthest to the right is the ones digit next digit to the left is the twos next comes fours then eights then 16 32s and so on okay okay so what does that mean that means there is kitty fur on our tongue damn you little cat uh, <laughs> okay, we tackled binary, I think it was in Python earlier. For example, blah blah blah, the binary 10101 is equivalent to the decimal 4, 1 plus 4 plus 16, 21. So, 1... Zero in the twos place, one in the fours place, zero in the eights, and a one in the sixteen. And from there, you have sixteen plus four is twenty, and then plus one is twenty-one. That is just awful. Mentally, I don't think we're going to be able to do that one. That's going to be like a midday one or tackle binary when it's essential that does not no one wants to do binary on a saturday night that is just going to be way too painful yeah i'm i'm, I'm voting no i'm voting no that's that's going to be a special special awful stream that we'll save for the future in the meantime let's back out and we can do the somewhat easier, hopefully slightly less hilarious, finding the smallest integer in the array. Yeah, look at that. Give an array, uh, given an array of integers, your solution should find the smallest integer. Giving an array of integers, your solution should find the smallest integer. Given three, blah blah blah. Your solution, uh, your solution will return to 34, negative 345, blah, 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 will return negative 345. You can assume for the purpose of this kata, the supplied array will not be empty. This should be far easier than yesterday's. Should is the keyword. That's what we said about the, uh, what was it? Well, that's what we said about yesterday's challenge at Free Code Camp. Given an array of integers, this guy. Your solution should find the smallest integer. For example, given blankety blank, return to blankety blank, deal with that. Class. What the hell is class for? I don't need class. Do I need class? I mean, that's a that's also a very broad life topic in general, whether a person should have class or not, but uh, 
Yeah. We're far from that issue. Minimal classing is sort of our go-to preference. Just because it's easier. Class. Smallest integer binder. Find smallest args. Question, what the hell is happening right now? We're allowed to use JavaScript, right? I mean, I see JavaScript here. That's a thing. Let's go back. Just one. Can we use JavaScript to solve this? I think we can. I just didn't really see it displayed, obviously. And now I'm questioning their setup because it makes me concerned as a person. C Sharp. Java, JavaScript, PHP, and Python. Okay, okay. We should be good. It's just the only time I use class or have used class is for HTML. I'm trying to think when I may have used class in JavaScript. I just don't remember. <laughs> Plus, I just don't feel like it's needed. See, we did, as we mentioned before a few days ago, we had the same exact issue. This is why we're skipping the binary lesson. We had find the longest word in a string here at Free Code Camp, and at Code Wars, we had find the smallest word in a string. Same song and dance again at Free Code Camp. Just yesterday, we did return the largest number in an array. And here at Code Wars, ta-da, today's is find the smallest integer in an array. But we didn't use class for yesterday's. We just had function, hit the ground running. Hmm. Hey! Junicus. Class is JavaScript. Class is a new keyword, aha, in JavaScript. Interesting. So maybe just the content that I've gone through thus far in our introductory Code Academy type free code camp resources just haven't really covered that particular keyword yet. Right? Not to my knowledge. Let's do, although there's a lot of stuff not to my knowledge. We could, we could write a book about that. Look at line three in the test. One, two, and three. Aha. Th I take it that's what we want? A variable. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so test describes smallest integer test. Test it. Blank, blank, blank. Variable SIF. S-I-F. Yes, free code camp will not cover it. Not in the regular place. Maybe in the beta side of things. Good to know. Thank you for the, uh, the insight. Greatly, greatly appreciated. So I guess that means I'll have to use class to solve it, and I don't think it would be any, fundamentally any different than if it were your average function. I think not. We're going to go with our, our gut reaction and assume everything will proceed business as normal. So, if that's the case, we would take our stuff, function, find smallest integer, with our parameter of arguments. It's a single array. Yesterday we were dealing with an array of subarrays. Yeah, not our issue now. So, we will simply, one, out of the gates, I feel like I could just do return math dot min and then the array name copy args in a perfect world i'd love to just drop that and pretend everything will be fine however i think there's going to be a bit more finessing that will be required i'm still gonna run this just because yeah yeah that's hot that's hot that's awful they're super pissed look at all the angry red Love it.
love it. Um, so let's actually try something that's not completely awful. Um, we ended up doing a for loop yesterday. Okay, so however, the reason we did a for loop yesterday was because we were dealing with subarrays inside one array. We needed to return the max value for each of these. Ta da! Blah blah blah. D -d 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 -d. Run test. Beautiful. Close that C, and it pulls the max from each subarray. We don't really need that complex of an issue or solution, that complex of a solution, although it's still rather basic, but you know what I mean. <sighs> Math.min, the argument, I mean, I guess we could still do a for loop. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong. We could just not reference the second nested Array, if you will. Substring, subarray. Maybe we just run all of this. Because this was fairly straightforward. But here. I just feel like we should be able to do math.min and just drop args out of the gate. Or, you know, maybe even a... Not that we fully grasped the concept of dot apply yet. But I always see a null in front for most examples. One of these. Holy fucking shit. Did that actually work? Oh, hey, Injunicus. Okay, and that was, that's fascinating. Okay, you will see if you do more modern framework, say Reactor, even in uh, Angular 4. Almost actually, try math.min.apply, nulls and arguments, read math.max and MDM. Oh yeah, no, we spent all yesterday looking at that document uh, for trying to solve this guy. Yeah, no bueno, no bueno. All right, well, that's cool. So that worked. Let's do an official... I can't believe I actually got it that early. Attempt. d d d d d d Ta-da. You have passed all the tests. Hot damn. Look at that. Way cool. Good times. And, and, and Junicus even confirmed our solution with the math, or the, yeah, dot apply in the null beforehand. That is fantastic. Submit final. Let's see what all the cool kids wrote for their answers. Junicus. One of the samples is how to get the max of an array. Turns out min is the same. Another, I think, is math.min dot 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 args. Yeah, see, I tried the dot 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 yesterday for the largest one. Couldn't quite get the hang of implementing it, but that's quite all right. Ah, look at that. They used return math.min dot args for the first answer, but they have min dot apply null as the second. I don't think I've ever gotten second as our answer. Usually we're like fourth and a half place. I say fourth and a half because there's usually a lot of repeat answers. Like third and fourth will be the same. Or uh, the second and fifth answer will be like 95% similar in formatting. So there's kind of a lot of similar ones. And then that's where we just kind of chalk it up to all the same positioning. Anywho, good times. I can't believe, so what did, usually we're down near 10th. See, function, smallest integer finder, smallest integer dot prototype dot find smallest equals function arg, same song and dance, same song and dance. Interesting, they used this. I definitely like our solution. Pretty straightforward. Feeling good. Feeling good. Awesome. Well, hell, I wasn't expecting it to go that quickly. We can further test. There's actually something, I mean, it's been about 20 minutes already. And I think the last few days we've been trying to do, bless you, we've been trying to do um, 
shorter 20 minute streams, but we've been getting stuck and it's turned into some hour and a half nightmare. There was something I wanted to test here yesterday. We listed zero, one, two, and three as the second index to search for in the subarrays of yesterday's challenge. Hold on, Junicus. That one with the function is what class does on, oh, the, that one with function is what class does under the covers. Okay, so that explains what they were doing down with, well, down in the lower section. Where'd it go? This guy. Ta-da. Way cool. Good to know. Good to know. Let's go ahead, back out. Yeah, if we tried to tackle the binary one, we would have been here for like six days. There would have been tears and a lack of food. We are so close to level six. Do we push through? No, no, no. We'll we'll save we'll save breaking through to eight to or uh, to level six tomorrow. We are going to further test the challenge we did yesterday which was along the same lines, I wanted to try it by putting in J instead of the numbers without setting up J as a for loop. Let's close that. Um, do, 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 do. That one with the function is what class does under the covers. Oh no, you can do much better. Do you know, uh, do you know about reduce? I have dabbled with reduce on occasion. It's, it's definitely not one of my go-to tools, but I know it's a thing. We dealt with reduce here. Condensing stuff. You can get the similar result hunting out a value of sorts via reduce and such and such. Probably not the most detailed example, but uh, yeah. We've, we've encountered it a couple times. I think we encountered reduce... At Code Academy, we've implemented it at Code Wars before we encountered it here at Free Code Camp. So yeah, we've we've seen it. And in examples, finding solutions on how to solve KDAs or challenges um, as we're completely lost and scared and don't know what to do as we just randomly Google things on how to find solutions, we've come across Reduce a handful of times as well out in the wild. D -d 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 -d. Their example is good though. Variable single array equals array dot reduce. You got your function with your previous value and current value, and then you return previous minus current, and ta da, you've got an optional zero uh, or an optional place on where to start hacking away at the list. It's a thing. I didn't use that additional, the optional zero or uh, the optional place to identify that. D -d 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 -d. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, right, condensing stuff. Basically, you take an array of n dimensions and turn it into an array of n minus one dimension. In this problem, you can use reduce to turn a second array into a one-dimensional array. Oh, a two-dimensional array into a one-dimensional array. Fascinating. Yeah, there were a couple resource... Um, I think I went through at least... Well, at least two, but I think possibly three different... Um, what's it called? Three different solutions yesterday before ending up on this one. Tiny cat, your head is like right where my arm would be set down, but on my left side, just out of range of camera, but I can't really type without basically crushing your skull, which I really don't want to do because I just want to type. Yeah, there we go. You moved your little noggin. Uh, what were we going to do? So we had zero, one two, and three, which are all indexes, indices, 
I don't know what we call them in each subarray, but I was thinking, wondering, after I finished the stream yesterday, if I could do it with J or all of them using zero. Does that still work? J is not defined. Cool, cool. Just like I wanted to try putting four in because I don't believe four would return anything because the highest one would be three since there's zero index. So run that. Null. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh, uh -huh. Now watch. Let's do all zeros. Zero. And zero. And zero. And zero. I was thinking of all these outcomes yesterday after we had our success of solving it. And ta-da. Okay. Now interesting. Zero. One. Two. And three. I just wonder why that's the one to do. 527, 9, blah, blah, and blah. One for the Guinness books. Uh, boo do 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 Gina Kiss, in this problem you can use, okay, uh, you should get used to reduce map and filter. They're used a lot in the intermediate and advanced problems. Good to know. Speaking of problems, since Code Wars went so quick, why not try chipping away at the next one here at Code Academy? Hopefully, we have just as good of luck, although I seriously doubt it. Dee 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 dee. Uh, Junicus, do you know how to access two dimensional array? Uh, yeah, two D dimensions? Two dimensional arrays? This is the first two-dimensional array you have done. Well, I think it was the first two-dimensional array uh, act. You know what? I don't know if it was the first one here at Code Camp. It's definitely the most recent two-dimensional array we've dealt with here at Code Camp, but we ran into a couple at um, Code Academy. Again, uh, also a few at Code Wars. Drawing a blank on which K does, but I know we've dealt with them. Uh, I don't think they were all numbers-based. I think there was like a phone book contacts type CADA that we did at Code Wars. Also, I think there was a phone book type contact challenge at Code Academy. But yeah, we've, we've worked with them before. Uh, was MDN... I'm trying to think of where they had a good example... JavaScript, multi-dimensional arrays. D -d 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 -d. See, my concern or issue that I was running into yesterday was uh, just my basic understanding. If it was or the, the easy out for yesterday's challenge was the fact that they had specified that it was only going to be four sub arrays and each one would only have four um indices elements so that's why we were able to hard code the zero through three otherwise i would have needed and i had set up a second for loop my first for loop was using variable i the second one was variable j and blah 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 you 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 know what's going down but uh anywho we ended up since I was using math.max, that also loops through everything. So I only needed the single initial for loop, then math.max for the secondary subarrays. And it all worked out. But yeah, again, it was uh, it was an easy out given the specifics of that challenge because they had mentioned, I think we can even just go back one. For, yeah, it's right here in the first part. For simplicity, the provided array will contain exactly four subarrays. So that's kind of our easy out on why we were able to do this. Definitely not ideal for all, all issues, um, but for this one, it flies. One for the Guinness Books. We'll, we'll tackle the next challenge, and then we'll call it a day. Confirm the ending. Check if a string, first argument string, 
ends with the given target string, second argument, target. Hold on, what's going down? Uh, Junicus. Two-dimensional, uh, yeah, sorry, raised. Junicus, I can write something that might help you understand why it needed to be 0 through 3 on that problem the way you have it. Yeah, right, your solution is not ideal, Junicus. So want help refactoring that. And now that you know about math, dot max dot apply you can get a better solution I, I i probably should but i think i'm going to hold off for now i did give math dot max dot apply a crack yesterday but i definitely didn't have it formatted right to properly take advantage of it and it came back with there was lots of red kind of like this frustration some errors it was not pretty, but overall, we uh, we did barely make it out alive. What were we looking at here, though? Something about confirming the ending. Check if a string of first argument. Also, a lot of these, each one seems different in my mind, but I've noticed that each one does start to build on top of itself, or one after another. Not all of them have used all the same methods and uh, solutions that build, but a lot of them have shared a lot of the same tools and methods needed to solve them. Confirm the ending. Check if a string, first argument, string, ends with the given target string, second argument, target. So string and target. This challenge can be solved with the dot ends with method, which was introduced in ES 2015, but for the purposes of this challenge, we would like you to use one of the JavaScript substring methods instead. Remember to use read, search, ask. If you get stuck, write your own code. Here are some helpful links. The other thing is I think I was going to stick with my other less pretty solution in the meantime for the return the largest numbers in array because it's still their basic algorithm scripting section. If it was intermediate or above, I definitely think I would have tried to put more effort into it, if that's a thing. I'm sure it is. So I'm leaving my basic answer for their basic problem, at least for now. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, what, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, last night I was doing one of the projects. Got it finished somewhat late, but as, but it's as finished as I want to work on it. Gotcha, gotcha. And I would love to know why your honey is playing because the screen is distracting. Ah, that, that is bless, uh, bless. I was thinking of the sneeze because that's the last time I turned over and I said, bless you. Um, she is playing breath of the wild currently in what seems to be one of the shrines one of the test of strengths they can be quite a nightmare uh so yeah good good times what am i looking at right 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 we're comparing string and target this challenge can be solved with blah 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 use some helpful things substring dot substring this is not going to end well hmm uh junicus ah zelda didn't think it was worth playing that much to get one game oh for the switch no see ah and i kind of agree slightly i I'm playing it, we, the, the, yeah, two of us, uh, played it on the Wii U. So not a Switch, the Wii U. And we had the Wii U for other past Zelda games. So it made sense, just get it on the Wii U instead of going out and getting a Switch because Mario wasn't going to come out for God knows how many months and there weren't that many other games to justify it. However, after playing Breath of the Wild on Wii U, I could wholeheartedly say that getting a Switch just to play Breath of the Wild 
would be totally would completely justified. That makes perfect sense. I I know there are some people that did not fully enjoy the game, uh, but I think the vast majority found it just short, if not beyond, awe-inspiring. What's fascinating about the game, even though it's not like the most, well, it's weird because it is quite visually stunning, even though the graphics, graph, uh, yeah, graphic performance, graphical performance, doesn't matter, isn't the highest, it's not, it, it wasn't about like setting the highest individual aspects of the game, what was unique about it, and I think the, um, like the test playthrough time that they had Nintendo's budget to have everyone who was working on the game be able to like take it home and play through like over the weekend and hours on end throughout the entire development life cycle. Uh, I know not a lot of games they have quite the budget for that additional time for testing the game, but in doing that, so many of the it wasn't like raising the highest bar to make the game great. What they did was raise all the lowest bars. There's very little terrible to the game. There's plenty of games that have a lot of awesome aspects or very few awesome aspects. But what's unique about Breath of the Wild is that there's very few terrible aspects about the game. They raise the lowest part of the bar for that game extremely high across the board. And I think that was the key in making it a fantastic game overall. Anywho, I digress. Back to the challenge at hand. Just some ramblings of a crazy person. My thoughts, my two cents on, on that whole bit. Uh, what am I looking at? Something regarding a string. Function. Confirm ending. String. Target. Never give up and good luck will find you. Foul core. Return string. Confirm ending. Bastine end? What the f is happening here? I don't even know what I'm looking at. I don't actually know what they're asking for. What the do? I. What is all of the... Why do they all have the ends? Confirm ending. Bastion. Oh, I'm feeding it in a string, and they want the very last character. If it's an N, that would be true. Connor should be an R. Since it returned an N, that's, that's a big fat lie, and everyone should be burned alive. Fascinating. Versus... Walking on water, developing software from specifications... Both are frozen. Specifications should return false. However, it has to give me a new name. Returns name. So it's just not the last character. Hmm. Okay. I... I think I have an idea. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Open sesame. They return same, which is only a portion of it, and that returns true? What the hell is going on? If you want to save our world, you must hurry. We don't know how much longer we can withstand the nothing. No. Mountain. I, I'm not actually certain what I'm supposed to be returning. Same as Bastion and N. N is a portion of it. So as long as I just return part of the last phrase... So I guess we're working our way backwards. So it could technically, I think, just be E. It could be M-E. 
AME and SAME, or it could be the whole word, or even just ESAME. So as long as it's coming from the end and working its way backwards and no more than the last word, or if it's a single word, it returns it, or it'll be true. True strings end with target, or false string does not end with target. It can be more than one word. So as long as the target, the end, is included, it's going to fly. Okay. We just need to have the end of it factored in. Little cat, your face is on tab and caps lock. So we're going to have to move the keyboard and your death claws so I can type. Okay. Okay. Good times. Good, good times. Uh, let's do this. So, we have string and target. Target. I'm drawing a blank on how target works. JavaScript, target. Or that's just the name of the variable? I thought target was like a keyword. I thought that was a thing that could be done. No, I'm just crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. Making a list. Yeah, I know it can be used for like CSS and stuff. In HTML or click events. Or scrolling or hovering over. That's probably not what they're looking for. This is a different target. Different target. Dee 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 dee. Okay. So we've got our string and our target. Question. So return string, it's just so strange. Hold on, substring, let's see what they have to say here. Hopefully this pushes me in the right direction. And I could probably also see how the hell that works to get an idea of what the hell I should be doing. So string dot substring start and then length. The substring method returns the character in a string beginning at the specified location through the specified number of characters. Start location to which begin extracting. If it's a negative number that's given, it will be treated as string length through start. Length is the string. Substring minus three is treated as length through three. The number of characters to extract. Okay. Return value, a new string containing the extracted section of the given string if length is zero or a negative number. Blank, 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 blank. Description, start, character index, zero, good. Do we have better examples of this? So string, which would be our parameter coming in, so we don't have to worry about that. We are just setting up this substring. It starts at 1, which would be 0 indexed, so it's skipping A, 0, B is 1, and it stops at 2, C. So it's inclusive. It's inclusive. It includes C. Good to know. It's inclusive. Well, let's go ahead and try that. Let's just baby steps. Go time. D D D D D D D D. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, target is a variable. Don't confuse it with jQuery. That's something else. Elements in jQuery have a target property. 
Oh, that's where I'm remembering it from. The jQuery section that we went through. See, see, target HTML and blah, 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 and classes. Yes, yes, that's okay. There we go. It was jQuery nonsense that I was thinking of. Not what we're looking for. Not what we're looking for. Uh, terrific Taylor. Dot, 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 dot. Who's on the bed? My fiance is on the bed. That's what that is. <clears throat> or technically who that is. Okay. Oh, don't knock that bottle over. Uh, what are we looking for? What are we looking for? Stuff. No, we were looking at substring nonsense. What the deuce is the difference between substring abbreviated and substring. Let's find out. The substring method returns a subset of a string between one index and another through the end of the string. Index end. I feel like we could put target here. An integer between zero and the length of the string, specifying the offset into the string of the first character to include the return substring index end optional an integer between zero and the length of the string which specifies the offset into the string of characters not to include in the return substring wait a second i think that's the difference so wait the number of characters Oh, I get it. It's starting on this one, and you're telling it the length, how far to travel two characters deep, which we, and it's starting at one, so B and C. That's what's going on. Okay, clever. Based on length versus this given locations optional an integer between the length of blah 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 which specifies the offset into the string of the first character not to include okay way cool face reveal oh is the well the mic's always in the way but yeah ta-da hello uh junicus substring is based on length and substring full is based on indices indexes indici one of those Using substrings, Mozilla, 0 to 3. Moz, 0, 1, 2, and it cuts at 3, so it does not include I. 4 to 7. Would be L, L, well, 0, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six. Since there is no seven, it includes a. So L L A. Okay, okay, good to know. Anything dot substring in those two. So we could, I think, I'm not sure, but I would like to put target. At the end? Is that weird? That's weird. It's wrong. I know it's wrong. It's definitely wrong. Tiny cat, you have to move your claws. Thank you. Why are you so sleepy? Let's do this. Let's do this. Just type. Go with your gut. Worst case, we have Junicus looking over. Dee, 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 dee. Waiting in the winds to put out the fires of confusion. Just type anything. String. 
dot sub string. I want to use this one. Substring parentheses semicolon something. See, I uh fuckers. Substring. I'd like it to be zero to I don't even know. I guess in my mind this is what I'm seeing, but I that's wrong. It's wrong. We aren't just going to be returning the string itself. We're going to be returning something getting processed by substring. So there's going to be a variable, fucking, I don't know, we'll call it sub. This one we can call substring. And this would be substring. But I feel like there's more to it because it would also be returning whatever the hell this is. Whatever is involved with target. Maybe string and target. I don't even know what I'm doing. The next thing would be another variable for determining target. Target variable, we'll call it tar, would always be the last, or at least start from the end. It would start from the end. We can do that. We can start from the end. B, C, right here you can start so we could start with target so it can always be uh this the 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 substring dot length minus one okay okay this is barely come together target will always be string dot length uh length minus one uh String dot length minus one tar and um tar 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 string. I just I don't have any good variables to like make them stand out. Variable chipa ta tar string. Yeah, tar string. These are dumb variable names. Uh, good variable names help me visualize. My issue is that I can't think of good variable names to help visualize, so then I end up with stupid ones like this. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, what would I do with that? I, I would have a substring of some sort. And something like this, where I'm putting tar into the beginning, this guy, and telling it to do something with it, like this, sub string, bless you, good luck, death, uh, terrific tailor of your fiance, oh, uh, I mean, possibly, probably not anytime soon, they need to get up, maybe, but have you done any of these projects? I have done these projects. Wait, wait. Does this count as a project? I figured this was a challenge. I thought you were discussing... See, when I think projects, I'm thinking of the ones that are done at CodePen via free code camp, or technically through code camp via CodePen. One of those. We've done a couple. I did my Day 9 tribute page. And uh, made a horrific portfolio website and some of their tests that they had. But yeah, um, so there's there's been those challenges. And we've done all of these ones. It's been slow and painful. 
a lot of confusion. I also tend to overcomplicate things. That's confusion and overcomplicating both my strong suits, superpowers, really. BDX Inc. First thing they want you to return, true or false? Son of a... Really? True or false? Never would have guessed that. Okay. Oh, because I'm checking if something has a something. Junicus. Yeah, no, <laughs> notice that. Overcomplicating indeed. Well, all the tests tell you should be true or should be false. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. That is a thing. You know, for all of the th uh, things that I've completed here at Free Code Camp, oh, look, 238 items or of these challenges and activities that I've completed. I, j I so rarely, even though I see them, it just doesn't sink in at all. I don't know why. I'm going to blame the first 150 plus days of this year-long adventure now that we're 217 days in, but still the first almost 70-75% of this journey was at Code Academy, and I'm just used to dealing with all of the activity and information being dealt with in the uh, little anecdotal instructional area. Code Academy hit all this stuff. So you can see what they were actually testing for, which led to a lot of confusion. Here, they show it all, but I just, it doesn't trigger in my mind. Bad Steven. Bad Steven. I even read through it. Usually, I don't even read through it like I did earlier. I was just trying to get a feel for what the hell's happening. This bit. So those are the parameters, and it's returning true or false. So if, really, it should be an if statement, maybe, now that I think about it. If target is a part of string, if target, hmm... Target is, I don't even know, I don't know how to code if it's part of the string, but something regarding string, then I guess simply return true. And true, otherwise that's pretty straightforward. False. Return. So what exactly am I doing? So all of this, see, I thought I was setting up string and I thought I was setting up target, but I'm not. Those are the parameters. They're going to be giving me all of this crap. So I am just checking to see if it is contained, if blank, if target equals, I guess I could do substring of string. If target is equivalent, I feel like there should also be like a for loop maybe to go through. Maybe not. If it just checks if it has it, if it contains that, I think it should be an equal sign. String dot something. Substring. Maybe. Those bastards. String dot length minus one. I 
I don't even know. We'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, all the tests tell you, Junicus, all the tests tell you should be true or false. Hmm, if target equals the part of the string that is the end that you'd get by doing something to string. Right now, what are the indexes that you will use? String dot length minus not one something more useful okay 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 hold on oh my god little kitty's shaking she's totally she's frantically dreaming right now she's just kind of it, it's like if uh she was set to vibrate like your cell phone just that's her while she dreams kind of shaky so we are kind of on the right path string dot length minus not one but something more useful see in here in the substring i was thinking which clearly this is wrong but but i was thinking uh yet again string which this is why the formatting is clearly wrong dot length minus one followed by blah 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 but this really isn't necessary if i'm working with that first so let's go ahead and take you cut that minus something or other if target is equal to the length of string Minus what? Minus. So it's going to be returning the number. So Connor would be six. We are hunting down target, which is some portion of it. Maybe we should look at one that's true. Open sesame four, five, plus six. So 11, confirm ending. So open sesame would be the string dot length. That's 11 minus 1, and the target would be at the end. Target would be, I think target is a substring, and it's identifying the end of it. I'm probably crazy. Remember the first argument to substring is the index where you will start. No, substring was right. The string dot length minus something is the argument to substring. Oh, I was right? You hear that, little cat? Will you move your face off of the function key? Oh, God, little cat. You make coding so difficult. String dot substring mi length minus 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 something substring was right substring was right also remember that the second argument of the substring is optional so we don't necessarily have to have this. Good to know. Good to know. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Okay, hold on. Tiny crisis die. Uh, all right, all right. Don't mind me. Even though, despite it being midnight, it's like 8,000 degrees in our room. Let me deal with making my way to the air conditioner, turning that on, and, and then we will proceed.
Donka. Think amongst yourselves. Approximately, what do you think? Mm, 32 and a half seconds starting now-ish. All right. All right. <sighs> Air conditioning crisis. Barely averted. There we go. Thought it was already on. Thought it was on auto. No, it was off. So it's sweltering. Something about something. Junicus. No. Substring was right. The string dot length minus something is the argument to the substring. It's not one. And since the second portion is optional, we don't technically need that. So we will be putting in something. Uh, boo -doo 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 -doo. Remember, the first argument to substring is the index where you will start. So wait, wait, wait. We're starting... Well, so we're starting at the end. This is kind of like when I was looking at down here, target, which is string length minus one. So it would be starting at the end because you can start towards the end, right? We found a good example of it somewhere. We did. Not ends with event target. Multi, oh, where'd it go? I have no idea, but it was somewhere, and uh, maybe it was this guy. Ah, yes, right. See, seven, starting at the end, actually just passed. No, yeah, seven, just passed, because it's a zero index, so it goes zero to six for seven characters, so seven is really the eighth character, blah, blah, blah. So, seven to four. Four, I assume something similar to this, less the second optional string, because that's four to seven. So, hmm, confirm, uh, uh, anyways, uh, there was more you were saying, Junicus. No, the substring was right. The string dot length minus question mark is the argument to substring, and also remember that the second argument of the substring is optional. Look at the samples of MDN again. Okay, ah, cool, cool, we're here, we're here. Look at the one before the sample in line nine. This guy, the one before. So it's telling us to start just before okay okay so it's telling us to start at four so look at this we've got zero for m one for o two for z three for i four for the first l and that's where it starts and then since there's no second parameter it continues all the way to the end so substring minus something we need to provide the last like word or th 
thing. It's a thing. We're specifying that. If the length is 7, but the argument you use is 4, then what would the question mark be? Uh, uh, well, the, the length is 7. I assume you mean so like this. This is, bless you, this has the length of 7, but it's 0 index, so it's 0 to 6. 4 would be 3 minus the length minus, yeah, 3, 7, 6, no, bad. It's the 0 index that's causing my mind to, to, to question myself. String length minus one, because it will, string length will return seven characters. Minus one gives us six, which is the end of the string array because it's zero indexed. That's why we do minus one. So hold on, hold on. Uh, um, um, yeah, it's, it is three. It is three. There's no need to, I'm just, I'm questioning my subtraction via zero indexing that's why i'm just crazy person's choice after midnight it's like gremlins don't do math after midnight don't get them wet don't feed them so it would be but hold on though why why does it change for some of them This, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, oh, 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 I, 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 got, I got it, I got it, it's, it's because, okay, it makes sense now, kind of, um, this is a string, but it's being split, well, I don't know if it's being split into an array, but if one is the last letter, and if all of these, were, well, if all of these are taken as whole words, name would be the last whole word in that phrase. So that would be string, um, um, uh, substring minus two, right? To start before the end, it would start at new. I don't want it to start at new. I want it to start I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. Sample, Junicus. Sample in line nine. If the length is seven, but the argument you use is four, then what would the question mark be? Seven minus three equals four. And what is the three coming from? What is the three coming from? What is the three coming from? The depths of hell? Um, hold on, hold on. God, this is so basic. This must be so sad to watch. I apologize to any and all humans having to endure this. This, this is bad. I'm gonna get rid of all this craziness here, because... It, it's definitely not needed. This isn't going to solve anyone's problem. Although I'm, I'm actually going to comment it out. Just to document the wrongness. Here we go. Here we go. Um, this is a thing. Hold on. Return. I guess we can just leave it as string. And that should be fine. Uh, I'm not sure why they're pissed at that though. Little kitty, did you type something wrong? It's probably my fault. <sighs> um, so where's the three coming from? Okay, okay, okay. If the length is seven, but the argument you use is four, then what would the question mark be? Let's go back to this. Four 
it would be 3. String length minus 3. And if we go back, string length is 7, but it's 0 index minus 3. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, and that would still be 4. L, which is 4. Okay. Okay. So, what is the question mark coming from? It's coming from the dot length in the sample. Where is the 3 coming from? The 3 is coming from subtracting from the length to get LLA because it will never get to that. It will exit in the if else. Forget the index for now. Okay, don't worry about the index. Bad Steven. Bad Steven. Forgetting index. Forgotten. Dun dun dun. Is if else. Okay. Don't mind me, I'm also going back a bit. String ends with target. Wait, same as n. Bastion and n. n is a portion of it. n is which target. Bastion and n. n is a portion of it. n is target. Target is a part of string. True, string ends with target. Or false, when string doesn't end with target. Okay. So target. Target is the crux of this. Forget the index for now. Imagine you would do confirm ending Mozilla LA. Okay. Okay, I can be that guy. I can pretend that's happening. Definitely getting rid of, rid of this. Okay, so string and target, Mozilla, and we're delivering LA. If, don't mind this, LA... We can even put it into a string. Seems messy, but don't worry. Mozilla. Well, we'll get rid of the quotes. If LLA equals Mozilla substring Mozilla dot length what would I do if LLA is equal to the end to all of that and we're looking for the substring Mozilla dot length I would do minus target or technically right is that all I was missing I just didn't think I could use target here and have it equal target there Right? Something's off. It's not. It would be. Or maybe. The only other thing I can think of is. If it was just. Mozilla. Minus target. But I don't think I can subtract letters like that. The dot length thing kind of gives us that ability to do something similar to it. Maybe it's target.length? Oh my god, is it target.length? 
wait a second. So if, hold on, because then what if, what if Target was, was, uh, Anna, although that's three, and this was Banana, Banana, and that would be Banana 2, Banana length minus the length of Target, or that would be Anna dot length, right? Did I think length? Yeah, maybe. I think I could live with that. Target string and we're doing substring and we're on the hunt for string dot length minus the length of target and if this is equal I feel like it's just off by a bit though for some reason I don't know why I think it's off by a bit, but that's what I feel like. Also, the return string. I don't even know if this is needed. See, because I feel like I should be either returning string up here instead of true. We'll see what happens. Junicus, close. Try it. 11 is not needed. I already pulled the trigger false. That's fine. That's fine. 11 can go straight to hell. Good. Run it. Hey, we got some green ones. Cool. Look at that. Okay, but something's just slightly off. I wonder why the false ones are working. Maybe it should be return string? No, 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 that's crazy talk. It, it should be return false, or return true. Why isn't that working? Uh, we're getting closer. Something to do. Use that tiny brain of yours, Steven. Think it through. If, maybe it's the third, I doubt it was the third equal sign. Yeah, no, of course it wasn't. Plus two is more lax, and we're just trying to skate by. So maybe it's not target. Maybe, no, no, no. If target equals maybe it's not equals because see the substring right now it's going to return the substring of no string length 7 minus so if it was 7 minus 3 It would have returned the substring of four. Yeah, and that would be target. And it would return the last three values from it would return four, five, and six. And target would equal target. So that does make sense. And it should return true. Okay. Uh Junius. Okay. Now debugging. Try console log string dot substring string length minus target dot length and see what it gets and look at it in the debugger console mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh no, brace yourselves, children. Our face is blowing up. Bad times. Bad, bad times. Copy. Am 
that cool? Is that a thing? Not, not target equal just, just substring. <laughs> okay, so put it before the if else uh, or it won't run. My bad, my bad. <clears throat> Let's run that and then it was view developer javascript console d d d d d d d d connor bastion let's run it again aha so death what do we have here Bastion, Connor, Open Sesame, Walking in Water, so, hmm. of course my webcam is blocking this part of the screen, but whatever, don't mind me, don't mind me, sneezy face issues. <coughs> Oh god. Oh god. Okay. Okay. Staying afloat. Staying afloat. Uh, F12. Okay, debugging in this thing is a pain. Try changing that console log to return. String dot blank 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 blank. You got it. Return string dot substring string length minus target length. There's this. Let's do, let's comment this guy out, shall we? Or don't worry about commenting out. We'll just run it. Yeah. Hey, Bastion. Look at that. Neat. Um, but more importantly, D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D Wait a second, wait a second. So we do want console log. Or I guess I would return console log. Okay, debugging in this thing is a pain. Try changing. Wait, oh, try chaining or changing? Probably try chaining that console log to return. Could have been changing. We'll see. D D D D D D D D. Dum dum dinner and dum dum dinner and dum dum dinner dum 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 dinner and dum dum dinner dum. Oh, that extra parentheses was for the console log. Right, right. Also, as a side note, Junicus, thank you so much for all of your effort in trying to save this ship. I don't think saving this ship is worth it. You know? You're... Your efforts are outstanding, but I, I think we are a lost cause, Junicus. It is a Saturday night. 
I'm sure you have far better things to do. I mean, we, we deeply appreciate your assistance and guidance. We would not have made it that we would have been on whatever the variable thing, trying to recreate the parameters that they were already giving us. Junie Kiss, what the heck? I run on my console and it works. Of course it does. Of course it does. It's just me because I, the universe is challenging me. <laughs> oh dear God. Uh, save yourselves, children. The ooze is coming. Uh, why? We have the lung capacity of an 80-year-old man. This is not good. Now, what was I looking at? We had console log. And we thought about changing it to return. Just do return, blah, 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 blah. Will do. Return. Ditch the extra one. And fire away. Be -de 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 -de. Look at that bastion, yeah. This is messed up, I get in. More likely, I'm messed up, huh? Eh? Yeah, crazy. No one ever thinks of that one. I do, I remember. Remember, the code's not broken. I am. Should I uncomment my if fiasco if else equals hell hmm copy your code and reset the page will do let's copy this yeah hashtag copy get my copy on and reset You know what will even reset our code? Yeah, clear my code. Give me some of that. Refresh again. B de dee dee de dee de dee. Die de die die de do de do. Dee de dee dee de dee de dee de dee de dee de dee de do. Enter and paste it. Beautiful. We got our return and our if else nonsense. That should be a valid answer. Not, don't know why it's not working. Mainly because the universe is punishing us for trying. At least that's what I've chalked it up to. Oh, hold on. Comment that out. Return. Yep, Bastion. Uh, what if I comment out... This got typo. Typo. It was me. I'm a typo. I did something wrong. Bad, Stephen. I'm... I'm returning... something... You found it. Length. Return substring. Oh. Yes. Legends. <laughs> Ah, uh, son of a whore. Scalding bag of dick tips. God, son of a god. Bald wieners and fuck god. Motherless. Ah. <sighs> Damn. Bad Steven. This is a textbook definition of bad Steven. Can't believe myself. <sighs> Typo for length. You don't deserve food. <sighs> Son of a bitch. That was like an additional 45 minutes of confusion. <laughs> Just awful. I am my own worst enemy. <sighs> Junicus, you saved us from lighting the whole city on fire. 
<laughs> God. <laughs> uh, ridiculous. Gina Kiss, well, at least I saw it and didn't waste many more hours or thinking that I was wrong and gone in another direction. Yeah, thank God. Oh. I, this right here that's just icing on the cake you make this look easy <laughs> they need to have like time sensitive time aware answers on on what answers they give clearly that is the least applicable congratulatory statement they could send our way right now oh my god son of a bitch thank you junicus for saving the day you shorten the war by like at least 20 to 30 years oh my god why save submit go forth close out of this we're not tackling another one we did one kata at code wars and one challenge here which was not supposed to take hours on end let's let's at least revel in the right answer all we can oh god okay so in the end it ended up being function confirm ending string and target were the two parameters if target equals string dot substring and we go with string dot length the string in its entirety and we do target dot length to target in its entirety at least the length of them those get subtracted and it perfectly tells you cuts it to exactly where it will read from in the substring if target matches up with that then it will return true else it will return false and everything will be right in the world run test you're on fire my soul feels like it's burning. Yes, that is accurate. Oh, dear God. Junicus, your lifesaver. What are we doing? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Now refactor, because that can be expressed in a simpler way. In if xxx, xxx already returns true or false so you can just return xxx and not need the whole if at all okay i like that we will do that you spent all that time we will happily oblige good good so all of this is just noise all we need is the return such and such because it will either be true or it won't in if xxx blankety blank our condition otherwise nonsense of some sort already returns true or false so you can just return xxx and not need the whole if at all all right so if i do simply copy you know what? I already have it. Ta-da! Return substring. Let's comment this noise out. Nope. Ta-da! Be de -de 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 -de. Give it a shot. Run it. We get an N, which is cool. I still think I missed something. Uh, target equals substring this bit right there copy of course we're always missing a step wouldn't be bdx sync if we were even grumpy cat approves damn straight he does let's let, let's gander at this the beauty of the simplicity really the straightforwardness it's almost magical it's a good answer junicus that is a good answer and now that we're intimately familiar with every single aspect of this freaking nightmare, we understand what's happening here. How cool is that? The cherry on top. Uh, my answer, return target with the three strings. One, 
either two equals target or three equals signs. I figured slightly less restrictive. That's why two. Although, I am aware that the better protocol is to do three. If you can be more precise in um, your comparators, then that is the way to go because it helps just with bug issue thingies later on. At least that's what I was reading for um, or reading about. But uh, yeah, you know what? And you know what? Why the hell not? Let's do that. Ta-da! Beautiful. Beautiful. Submit and go forth. Day 217 finally comes to an end thanks to the relentless help of Junicus. Yeah, usually that would be relentless. Might not seem like the best adjective, but it is the only thing that highlights his unyielding efforts to save this forever burning ship. We are deeply appreciative of that. Uh, what do we have on the horizon for day 218? Repeat a string. Repeat a string. That's funny because the title is repeat a string, repeat a string. Get it? Because it's repeating. Good, good. All, we'll save that fun for tomorrow. Let's go ahead and close out of all of this noise. Day 217, we are on the edge of reaching level 6. If we do a Kata tomorrow or in the next day, we will finally escape level 7, break through into level 6. That'll be very cool. And then we are currently about ease, halfway through the basic algorithm scripting. Uh, challenges here at Free Code Camp. 239 items down. We can back out to our profile. And let's see what are the final closing comments. Judicus, in this case, it's better. It doesn't matter for the test, but if you did confirm end, test 123. 1, 2, 3 equals equals would be true, and they are not strings, so it would end up, so it's up to what you really want to do. Before you leave, want to give me feedback? Oh, do I want to give you feedback? You're a freaking rock star. I, I don't get it. I mean, there's, uh, yeah, you're, 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 you're that guy, Junicus. You are. You save the day. It was very, very helpful. Extremely, we'll call it, uh, it was good because you didn't just come out with the solution and shove it in our face, which would have saved a ton of time, and frankly, I'm still cool with even that route, but you took the time to explain step by step what the hell was actually going on. It was very much like an E.T. feeding the hints one Reese's pieces at a time, and we got to find those pieces on our own. You weren't throwing them at our forehead. Although, you know what, I'm sure on your end it may have felt like that. Again, I, I compare uh, people assisting me, like yourself, via chat. Kind of like giving a cat instructions, telling a cat what to do via smoke signals. There's just... There's no connection, and it's my fault. I'm the crazy person. It's not you. If it seemed difficult to assist, it's because it's trying to save me. Your your efforts on any other program would have, or any other programmer would have been received immediately. But uh, yeah, good times. So what are we looking at? Before you leave, want to give me feedback? Junicus GitHub IO FCC local weather. Meant my project. Oh, yes, definitely. But now you know, right? Let's click the crap out of this link. B to D D to D to D. Do to do do to do to do. She's loading slowly. Oh, you know what? It's probably because it's on my phone. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. B to D D to D to D. Let's just go to behind the scenes of Twitch. Dum, dum, dum. This is the only way we can access 
Uh, oh, it's not responsive. That's cool. That's cool. It's there. Uh, this is one of the things I want to bother with. It's all good. See, see, there's the link. Right click, link it, new tab. Close it out of that noise. D da d d d d d. Wow, ah, it did load. It did load. You know what it was? It was my phone. Oh, well, I don't know why it loaded now. It loaded the second time just fine. Before it was the sexy, foggy background you've got going on. Good times. Way cool. D d d d d d d d. Fascinating. It's got. It's got Ontario on my phone, and then it's got Laguna Niguel for my computer, both of which aren't current, well, like, aren't my immediate location or city. Uh, I mean, I suppose maybe if we got a third cell phone, we could help, like, triangulate the regions. I'm sure there's some, like, cached thing somewhere on the computer. Or like one of those things if you're looking for a car, like the last area code you entered or something like that, or looking for a movie theater. But uh, yeah, not not quite. I like the Ontario one. Why is it so much hotter in Ontario? 88 degrees and 92? That sounds hellish. Where the deuce is Ontario, California? That raises more questions. You know what? We'll worry about that another day. We'll be fine. Crisis averted. The weather stuff is awesome. Uh, B -d -d -d. That's one of the things I don't want to pull. Oh, Junicus. Yeah, it uses the IP to do location. So it uses a service, and that's why it's probably what your IP or uh, your ISP is set for. Uh, I'm not using the actual device's geolocation. That I might want to change. Oh, gotcha. That makes more sense. Good to know. Clever. Oh, and I bet that's the difference. That's really cool. Cause, so, uh, yeah, Cox. I guess Cox is routing it from somewhere. I guess Laguna Niguel would be um, their nearest hub for us. Uh, but I've got my phone off of Wi-Fi right now. So it's using the cellular signal, which is returning Ontario. That's even cooler. I mean, just to see the difference in that. That's fascinating. Tons of fun. Okay, well, that was a fun alternate conclusion and ending. We learned three different things. We had we had code wars, we had our free code camp, and we got to check out Junicus's awesome weather uh, project. So yeah, good times, and to see the difference in how it reads the ISP. That's way cool. That's awesome. All right, well, good times, uh, Junicus. Yep. I might try to get the device geolocation first and use something like Google to get the city and use the IP thing as a fallback. Way cool. Well, I like that plan. It's infinitely better than anything I could create right now, so. Unless, if you need help finding the target length of a string, I can help with that. All thanks to you. Yeah, good times. All right, so we are closing out of Code Wars and Free Code Camp, and we are backing out into OBS. Thank you again to anyone and everyone who stopped by to view the stream and or assist. Today we had Junicus, who helped the entire time from beginning to end. Thank you so much. Seriously. We would have been there for another, like, three hours. I wouldn't have noticed the length thing ever. And then I would have just deleted it all and found some other solution. It would have gotten very bad. Uh, 
terrific Taylor stop by as well, and anyone else who may have accidentally stumbled in here to view the stream. Any and all views are greatly, greatly appreciated. The adventure continues tomorrow with the day 218 of the year of streaming and learning to code, but in the meantime, we are backing out of here. Stop the stream. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it.